Hi, I'm Ian Messenger with my co-host Lauren Blackford. Hey there. Thanks for joining us for this special episode of Small Business Small Talk powered by Hibu. At Hibu, we're dedicated to helping local businesses across America succeed and grow. And one of the ways we do that is by sharing firsthand accounts of how actual businesses have used digital marketing to be profitable, even in challenging times. Today, we've invited Dr. Robert Moore, owner of Moore Foot and Ankle Specialists in Houston, Texas, to speak with us about how digital marketing has worked for his practice. Hi, Dr. Moore. Thank you for uh, joining us on Small Business Small Talk. Thanks for having me, Ian. I'll see you too, Lauren. This is one of my passions, and it's uh, part of any business nowadays. Yeah, you know, I I, I actually wanted to um, kind of get things started with, in our prep call, you had referenced the fact, and I, I just thought this was, you know, spot on for us, that you really enjoy the lead gen aspect of your practice, which is, um, you know, it's not something that every every physician can say. A lot of them, you know, don't have the don't have the time, don't have the patience, frankly, don't, don't have the interest. You know, I, I can't imagine there were a lot of uh, marketing components to, <laughs> to getting your degree. So I, I think that's a good place to start. You know, you're, you're very um, uh, well-versed and hands-on with, uh, with marketing. And where do you kind of find the joy in that? I would say is the lead quality. Ironically, I have a lot of referrals uh, from rheumatologists, things of that nature, cardiologists, uh, people that have extremity issues. And you're not sure if the patient is, there's a plethora of problems. I'll go down the list. They're on the right insurance. And I've wasted every time on the phone. Uh, it wasn't someone who actually could come to the office uh, because they're really more of a hospital patient. So there's many reasons that, for lack of better words, waste a lot of time at the office when they could be on the phone or doing something else. And then ironically, I'll, I'll get a patient who comes down and sits in my chair and says, yeah, I, I heard about you from my neighbor, but I really didn't you know, know much about you. I jumped on, your reviews are great, patients seem to like you, uh, and they went down the list. Uh, we love your website, it seems like it's easy to navigate. So the whole experience, besides going off on another tangent on telemedicine, for obvious reasons, <laughs> Uh, is made uh, the computer, the all and the everything uh, for patients. And, and then, of course, someone who's really looked down deep on a guy like me who sub-sub specializes things like cosmetic foot surgery and ankle reconstruction. Like, oh, that's the guy. That's what I want. Uh, so you can't blast that all over your website. They have to do a little research. So that quality of patient um, is also comes in more on the digital marketing side. That's so interesting. So you're cutting out all that middle work of qualifying the patient because they're qualifying themselves before they even, you know, pick up the phone and dial based on what you're putting forth in your digital marketing. Yes. And it's not like we're, we're, we're selling, you know, protein bars or things of that nature. These are real leads. <laughs> these right. are decent ROI night. These are bodies. We, this is our business. This is what we need to see in our clinic. So besides that, there's the, that aspect of it too, which is nice uh, because of course, traditional is fine. And I do get quite a bit of patient to patient interactions, but even that, uh, like I told you earlier, uh, somehow there's a, a digital touch, maybe 50% of the time, just to see who I am and check me out. And that's, you know, ultimately that's what it really comes down to, right? Is reaching the right patient, not just every patient or, uh, you know, a wide net. It's, it's uh, especially when you're a specialist in your field, it's finding the right people that are looking for what you do. And <laughs> yeah, the insurance angle is certainly, certainly important. So what, for you, what's been kind of that right, uh, that sweet spot of, you know, the, the way you reach that right client? Is it, is it, you know, your website only? Is it a mix of website and uh, uh, you tell us? <laughs> Great question. It, it, it's a little everything. It's funny because, you know, the website's very important. Uh, SEO is king. Once you get up to a certain level and you're, you're especially when you've been on, on the grid for a while like me, uh, that's a constant background of awareness, even on a national level. Once in a while, so I'll, I'll get a lead from you know, Istanbul or, or, or Pakistan. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's neat to know that the people are actually looking for things. 
So you know that's working. And then your pay-per-click is, is important. That adds a little bit uh, a more mojo on top of the SEO. Yeah. Uh, we, we did a little bit, of course, the reviews are huge too. And a couple of little things I didn't really realize that were out there, like my business page. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I have one of these perks that a lot of people don't. As a molder, I'm slowing down. So what's my little niche? It's same day appointments. I'm not my, my schedule's not packed. Um, so I put that on my business page and it just blew up. Um, you know, it was a neat little accident. And mm -hmm. then social media, that's great, too, for awareness. Uh, it's it kind of makes them, again, go back to the web back to a search engine uh, or to your website. So I, it's definitely um, what we say at the office, teamwork makes the dream work and there's no exception in digital media. Springboarding off of that, you've managed to really get all of those different channels under one roof rather than you know working with one person to do this and someone else to do that. And then you dabble with a third thing over here. Was that kind of where you started? Was everything under one roof or did you eventually no. just pull no, everything? No, no, it's um, especially the wild west uh, of digital marketing. <laughs> you had to kind of carve yourself out. Being under one roof is really cool because with these people, they know each other, they work together, they have different accounts. Usually companies have, um, like yours, have a great I guess breadth, if you will. I don't think there's anything bad that you guys will know a whole lot about some of the more commercialized uh, products and services instead of, oh, all we do is healthcare. I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, when you work with, with a company like ours or the company that, you know, you're working with, like you said, there's a huge breadth of knowledge and the, you know, whole, we do it for you makes you able to run your business rather than run your marketing. And, you know, I think that's an important aspect. I want to go back and talk about the reviews. You had said, you know, somebody looked at reviews for your business. I think that's an interesting thing, especially in the medical field today, how we've gone from referrals and word of mouth to more <laughs> reviews based uh, businesses. How has that changed the way that you bring in new patients? This is going to sound odd because to be honest, uh, that's what I like about reviews to be honest, is king in the review world. Being a good person and then capturing a patient. Um, I was told one time, you may want to give them a little nudge. And in the <laughs> beginning, I thought, nah, I don't know, this is our professional. Uh, that's, you know, that's, that's not classy. But ironically, you'll talk to a patient who saw your reviews. And it doesn't matter what age or where they're from or, you know, background. It, it seems like the whole quality of what they read is why they're there. And then if they have a good experience, uh, they'll go back and they'll write one uh, with a smile. And, and every once in a while, we'll check up with one. In fact, I knew I didn't have any reviews for probably about a six-month period. And it wasn't because patients were unhappy. It's just, you know, it's just, I guess we've held off the radar and patients were overwhelmed. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just remind me it's a busy world. And then before you know it, it's Mrs. Smith. And she says, oh, the staff was great. He actually talked to me. And that goes a long way because um, some of my other uh, colleagues had, had called me for some reason. Like, oh, you're the, you must be the web guru because I heard about your <laughs> YouTube channel. How do I get these ugly reviews off? I go, you don't. Yeah. You're just honest. I mean, if, if Mrs. Y is really angry that day and rants about her bill, just answer and say, I'm sorry. Uh, it's an arduous system now with deductibles and this sure. and that and write-offs. But it's yeah. interesting how reviews work and it's not hard. And I would, I would encourage uh, physicians to get a few of those a month. Well, I, I have to imagine whether it's uh, quantifiable or not, that must also help with the same day appointments. I mean, there must be folks that are in that, you know, discovery learning phase and they run across a review and they go, wow, this guy sounds great. I'm going to call him right now. I have to admit, I was uh, just on Air Airbnb and um, there were like two on this one place and mm -hmm. like 750 <laughs> on this it's other a house. Different. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's probably a nicer house. Mm -hmm. So right. there's that too. You're right. I think that's a good point. With it. Your eyes dart down to the numbers and then you'll read a few. Oh, 
you know, and then, and of course, everything starts piling on top. They're close, um, or there's a niche there. Uh, I think um, pay per click is really cool for that. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning, if you really want that out there too, besides your reviews and your website, and I, and I think you can kind of connect it to, or at least put quotes on there. If you want to isolate that, I, I really want to do real pretty cosmetic ingrown nail or whatever, mm -hmm. um, something odd that nobody else does, you can pay-per-click that and your competitors don't do that. I mean, you'll get all the calls. Sure. Well, and I, I, I'm glad you brought up pay-per-click because I wanted to go back to something you said previously about how, you know, there, there seems to be kind of a, a little bit of a lift if you're doing, you know, SEO and paid. And I, I always think back to, I, gosh, it's got to be going on 10 years old. There was a, a study that I think Mashable or someone did where they they looked at some results and at least back then they found that there was a lift because folks might see your pay per click ad which can be to your point ultra specific and and very specialized and rather than click on that ad they may search for your name the name of your practice and then they find you through your SEO efforts and I think that's one of the big benefits of working with a company that does everything is you know if you were just in the pay-per-click space or just in the SEO space, you might be quick to dismiss that and go, no, 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 no. Don't just it, put all your money here, put all your eggs in this basket. And I think it's uh, whether it's the quantifiable lift or just that sense of I'm in more places, I'm easier to find. You really get that when you, you work with a company that kind of touches all of those things and can, can say, yeah, there's, there's a connection here. There's an overlap. You want to be doing both of these and that, by the way. <laughs> You're correct. A mix of everything is always better just because every time you touch the web or in the digital world, you're, you're, you're putting something out there. Yeah. Uh, I can't say too much about social media. I'm not on a lot, but I know from my profession, maybe you can expand on that, that it does okay. I'm not sure why some of my friends love it, but I think it's more like billboards or uh, brand awareness, uh, or Mrs. Mrs. Smith hears about it from her neighbor and says, um, oh, I, I, I saw that. I, I was on Facebook the other day. Again, I'm not sure how that works. I know they have lead generation on there. But for me, it's it's been generally, you know, back through the website mm -hmm. um, and actually making an appointment. Something else maybe the general public doesn't know it may or may not be, you know, good for this interface is the, are the forms. So mm -hmm. another thing a company like you guys bring to the table, it's a really clean form. Mm -hmm. It's not easy and it's not accessible. They're not going to fill it out. Mm -hmm. People are totally used to that. And then of course, you can do links. We have one where you, you because some you can scare people away, make an appointment like, whoa, I don't want to touch mm -hmm. anything on this. <laughs> I don't want to touch anything because I'm all, my God, I'll be sucked into the appointment vortex. <laughs> so so if, they, if you've got a good landing page and your landing page has a lot of information on it and content, I even have home remedies on mine. Um, they, they tend to stay on that page longer mm -hmm. and, they, and they won't get so scared about, you know, book now, book now, you know, we're not selling Cadillacs. I'm not going to just stop marketing to my favorite physician friends but this is different. I would like to be 75% digital marketing mm. um, this year. That's what I would like to be because those patients are the best. You're listening to Small Business Small Talk powered by Hibu. Hibu is the country's leading provider of synchronized digital marketing for small businesses, delivering more visibility, more visitors, more leads, and more customers. Visit us today at Hibu.com, H-I-B-U, Hibu.com. And we're back with Dr. Robert Moore talking about digital marketing for medical professionals. A lot of business owners make the mistake of trying to hit the broad side of the barn when they're doing mm -hmm. any sort of marketing. But what you have done is get so hyper-specific now, I know that you are a subspecialist, but you, you, the same day appointments and the things that you are very specific toward are what seem to be giving you the most success, right? How did you get to that point of understanding that you need to put out there what made you unique rather than trying to hit that broad side of the barn? Yeah, that was a good question, Lauren. Uh, it was kind of accidental. I teach, so I was putting us these teaching videos 
And when they were and they were going out and getting popular and some of the surgical equipment representatives would show other doctors and they say, hey, Dr. Moore's doing this. And then before you know it, that little niche market where I was talking about the cosmetic foot surgery, I thought, wow, I maybe I should build out a page for that. And that was a suggestion from the marketing team saying, hey, this is kind of what you're good at. So why don't we make a little column for that? That was neat. And then the ankle stuff too, it kind of funneled into that, but it started with the videos and it wound back into your world where I better let them know and quit fighting this keyword thing or, you know, I'm, most of us are OCD. <laughs> so I read a 463 page document uh, on Google AdWords and keywords because, uh, you know, Google offers all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> so it has nothing to do with the, that stuff. It has everything to do with that patient saying, I want this and I'm going to put a few keywords out there and I'm going to, I'm going to see what I'm putting out according to my brain. Right. And every once in a while, it's the craziest stuff. I'm sure you guys have stories too, where, uh, you know, someone's shopping for a swollen ankle that gives out mm-hmm. and, and, and the next thing you know, you, know, you do some Google research with getting something else you guys are fantastic at. And um, it comes up with, um, you know, catching ankle in quotes, catching mm. ankle. I don't know these things. I, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get like four leads that week mm-hmm. and then it pops up and you guys get to zero in on that. So yeah, that great question again, Laura, that, that niche marketing is great because we know what we like. Uh, to do in the office. We know what we're good and well-trained doing in the office at, and also that type of patient. For example, um, we love heel spurts. It's another thing. It's, uh, and it's worth mentioning because someone might, might grab something from this. It's in a different specialty. You put everything out there uh, that's related. They, they get Achilles pain. They're walking on their tippy toes because mm-hmm. their heel's killing them. They get arch pain. They get all the kinds of stuff. You feed that to your team like you guys. It's worth going into all that de- detail, I think, is because it makes you think about where your business is, what comes in with that patient, what services you offer, and then you can target those things. And I happen to like these patients, too, because they're, they're, they're miserable. You're one quarter shot, quarter, what, sorry, one quarter zone shot away uh, from being like, you know, you're the best, you know, mm-hmm. and, it's, and they're so happy. And uh, that's, what, that's what our job is. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, Lauren mentioned the broad side of the barn approach and um, it kind of aligns with what you were saying about social that, you know, for you, it really functions as more of a, more of a billboard. And I, I think that's one of the challenges that a lot of folks face when they try to do things themselves is maybe they expect a channel that whether it's their market, whether it's their industry, it is going to function as a billboard, but they're expecting lead jet or vice versa. Um, and I think that's one of the values of having that kind of diversified portfolio is that you then have the ability to say, you know, no, 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 such and such a channel is going to be just brand awareness and kind of getting your name out there. And then we expect those people to, right, go Google a term or Google your name or go straight to your website. And uh, again, you don't, you don't necessarily get that when you're putting all your eggs in one basket and saying, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try this myself and I'm just going to do social media and that should do the trick, right? I'm spending time on it. I'm putting money towards it. That'll, that'll do it. So <laughs> Laura was talking about the, the, the laser focus on, on which you're good. It's also important that you guys, I'm just imagining how you do it, but I'm sure every company as big as yours has a little scrum and, you know, all the parts meet about uh, Dr. Moore's pl- practice. What do you think? What that? Well, he did say, you know, he's flattered for, for the Istanbul. And then the lady drove in from Florida and boy, that's going to really drive business. No, it didn't. Hmm. Uh, you know, it, 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 I had to put up at a hotel. It was, it was a nightmare. I mean, I, I, we did a great job. And we, you know, we love the shout out and the, and the review we got. Then I thought to myself, hmm, let's see, there's 4 million people in Houston. Maybe I should focus here. So again, the team came back and said, hey, let's, 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 let's pound local. Let's pound local right now. Yeah. Um, and that was helpful too, speaking of getting laser focused. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
Absolutely. You'd be amazed how many people don't want to drive past 10 miles to come see their, <laughs> their surgeon. <laughs> That's usually the radius I put when I'm searching for something. There you go. But yeah, and, and then, but back to the niche, it, that was worth kind of, I don't know how you guys do it, but leaving the ends loose. So I, you know, I, I, I go past the walls of Houston. That's pretty cool too, because the niche markets are fun uh, because you do get business from that. If not anything, telemedicine, that's really working well that business for, for the old guys like me, because hmm. you've seen a lot. What do you think? It's, and it's, it's, uh, it's been nice. It's been yeah. nice seeing that, seeing that come, especially during COVID. Uh, we were shut down for a while. Yeah, absolutely. My doctor is, uh, gosh, I've been going to him for 30 odd years now, and he's just starting to get into telemedicine. I mean, he was forced to because of COVID, but uh, you know, it can, it can take a nudge sometimes to get people to try something new, whether it's telehealth or whether it's, uh, you know, marketing. And you know what, actually, now that I, now that I say that, it, it reminds me of another question I wanted to ask you, which is, we talk to a lot of different folks in all sorts of different industries. One of the biggest ones we serve is, is healthcare providers. And a lot of what we hear from people is just, I don't have time to do marketing. I don't have time to think about marketing. I don't have time to do the research to hire someone to do my marketing. So as someone who's been very, both hands-on and also really handed that over to a group of specialists, what would you say to other medical practitioners who go, ah, it's just not, I'll get around to it. It's, we're in a weird business that um, unless you are, you know, tight as IBM and you've got all these different people working for you and, and a COO, it's operations are all over the map. You can't sure. control it. Uh, this is just part of our industry. And we have a saying, revenue corrects everything. Hmm. And most in industries do say that too, <laughs> but ours in particular. But um, most of the revenue for us, and I know all my colleagues will agree with this, is getting them into the clinic and then, you know, seeing them processing their, their first visit, making that relationship. Of course, new patients are the lifeblood of any practice hmm. and a growing practice for sure. And they're hard. They're not the easiest unless you, I don't even think the old conventional stuff works well anymore like, like um, mass postcards in someone's mail slot. Like, you know, here I am. And once in a while, someone goes, oh, I, I didn't know they were down the street. But then again, Lauren said, you know, they're going to look at their phone mm -hmm. and then Google Maps <laughs> populates. They're going to do that first. So I would say to them that it's, I think it's important because not only do we not have the time, but the more time taken away uh, and the more resources, time and money put into marketing, the more those chairs will get filled and then there will be a moot point. The return on investment, the ROI for mm -hmm. digital marketing is, is ridiculously good. I mean, there's no way, and you can't, nobody can touch it. Uh, so if you're not involved in it, you're not really going to see the numbers you could see for any profession, I think, in, in the healthcare world. So that to me is, is what I like about it the most, besides like we talked about earlier in the my type of patient, the quality, speed, but I would I would say um, I don't think my rooms would be full without it. Well, Dr. Moore, thank you for joining us today, sharing what you've experienced and helping us in our goal to help medical professionals like you across the country. And to everyone listening, if you need help with digital marketing for your medical practice or any other local business, if you need a digital marketing partner who can deliver the kind of effective digital marketing we talked about today, help you with visibility on Google, with reviews, and more, be sure to visit us at Hibu.com. If you liked what you heard on this episode, please subscribe, leave us a review. It all helps. Once again, this is Small Business Small Talk out. Thanks for listening to this episode of Small Business Small Talk, powered by Haibu. Haibu is a leading provider of synchronized digital marketing for small businesses across America. With Haibu, you get all the digital marketing your business needs, all from a single provider, all working together to maximize results. Visit us today at Haibu.com, H-I-B-U, Haibu.com.